Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back today with another resin project. So, actually, in the midst of all of our Christmas projects, I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable resin gnomes. So I have been calling them Christmas resin gnomes because I'm making them, I guess, at Christmas time, and they're going with all the rest of my Christmas decor. But when you look at them, there's nothing Christmas about this. These are just resin gnomes. And I mean, I'm doing a pink Christmas, so they go perfectly with my pink Christmas decor, but I could put these out literally year round. So if you want to see how I made them, it is a three-step process, especially since this is a candle mold, so it does not have that shiny resin finished surface. I'm going to pour them, I'm going to paint them, and then we're going to put a top coat on you want to see the whole project, let's go ahead and get started. I will show you the entire process. These are actually pretty quick and easy to make. Well, okay, I take that back. They are not quick since it's a three-part process and you will need at least two full days for them to cure, but it is an easy project with adorable results. My mom even saw them and was like, where did you buy those? And I was like, I made them. <laughs> so. Let's get to it. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we are going to get started. As you can see, I have quite a few projects out here. So when I pour resin, I like to be able to mix up quite a bit of resin, maybe in a couple colors. Today I'm doing iridescent and rose gold, and then pour a few projects at a time. That way I don't have to just do, you know, a couple, couple little bits of resin. So. First, we're just gonna go ahead and mix resin, and then we will jump into each project individually. So, first things first, since I'm doing two different colors, I'm going to go ahead and mix, I think, I'm thinking 300 milliliters in my big cup here. So I'm gonna do 150 of A, 150 of B, and mix those thoroughly together. Once I get everything mixed up and ready to go, we'll, we'll switch. So make sure once you're actually working with the resin here that you have your gloves on and that you have your respirator on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my respirator on and I'll, I'll try to put some instructions up here on the screen since you won't be able to hear me anymore. Ready for the gnome? I'm 
just pull this away. He has a smooth hat, so he should come out of here without too much trouble. The harder parts are down here where his beard is because that has more ridges. But once I get it off the beard, I'm just going to grab him. Pull this away from his hat. Silicone stretches. You don't want to stretch it too much every single day, but a little bit of stretching is okay. There we go. Oh, look how cute he is. So I definitely think I'm going to paint the beard and maybe his feet and nose and then put a clear coat on him to seal that back in. So, so pretty. All right, so I've got um, some pink and some white and we're going to try to define this gnome a little. I've never really tried to paint like this on, like on top of the resin. I've put clear coat on resin plenty of times. Okay, we're gonna need a new plan because this is dry. New plan is we're gonna use the rose gold instead of the pink. We know it's good because we used it yesterday. We're gonna need much to do his nose and feet. Let's see. So this is what I'm worried about is that re paint on resin. Paint likes to stick on rough surfaces, and obviously resin is like very smooth. Not 100% sure we'll get a good solid, like, coat. But it doesn't necessarily have to be super solid. So the part I'm not sure about with the nose is that the paint has kind of pulled in the corners here, giving him like an outline of his nose. Let's see if we can't clean that up a little. It's more like the feet. There we go, that's better. There we go, that brush works better. All right, I think that's pretty cute. Let's do the white of the hair and I bet that will give us just the definition we're looking for. Now, obviously we could let this dry and then we could do another coat and it would be even more solid and opaque. I'm not sure that that's kind of what I'm looking for though. So we'll see. All right, well, maybe it's the type of paint because this is going on way more solid. Look at that. Look at the difference and how white that is versus how rose gold that is.
you can paint the inside of your mold either with paint or with mica powder and then the resin would kind of be part of this color it would be inside i'll link to a pretty mandala tray i did where i painted it with mica first but um in this case it's hard to see up inside of this mold I wasn't sure I could be super accurate with that method so I thought this would be better and we will just put a resin top coat over this and then it will be encapsulated of course that's extra steps but not like it's hard just time consuming oh he's cute he's gonna be really cute once he's shiny I can't wait so obviously we need to let that paint dry as best we can before we move on to putting a resin top coat on him so at least at least a little bit I feel like I want to make a few in different colors. <laughs> All right, y'all. So our little gnome here is dry. I can touch him and no paint comes off. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a top coat. You can do this a few different ways. I like to just dip my finger right in the resin with a gloved hand because then I can really feel that the resin is getting down into all those nooks and crannies. So and see the difference, right? And how shiny he is once I put a top coat on him versus without it. Now the difference here is when you buy a silicone mold, not all silicone molds are the same. So I loved this little gnome. I wanted to make resin pieces out of him, but he was not designed for resin. He was designed for being a candle. He's a candle mold. Now you can use silicone molds. Oh, leaf. The problems of working on your porch, guys. I don't like the resin smell in my house, though. When you use a candle mold, they are not designed to be shiny for resin. They are designed to be for candles. So, there we go. Now he should be a shiny little resin gnome. He's really cute. If I wanted to do another layer of paint once this dries and then another top coat, I could. But for now, I'm just going to take these resin gloves off. Put these guys aside to cure. Make sure if you do a top coat like this, you wear gloves. You do not want to get that resin on your fingers. All right, y'all, I hope you liked this little resin gnome project. You can obviously make them in Christmas colors, like pink is my thing, but if you want red and green gnomes, go for it. So far, I've made my dark pink gnome, my light pink gnome, and these are literally just like color switch. So pink, light pink, dark pink, dark pink. I kind of like it. They're super cute together. And this one ended up having the most bubbles on his beard. So, I mean, that's the difference and how you pour and how um, room temperature the resin is. So for this little guy and my other one, I made sure that the resin was inside and room temperature before I took it outside to mix. For this little guy, the resin had been outside for several hours. And it, I mean, I'm in Alabama, I pour resin on my porch so that it's not in my house making resin fumes. But after a couple hours outside, even in the Alabama cold, um, you can see the difference in the bubbles. I will put pictures up. So temperature matters when you're working with resin. And then of course my first one that y'all saw me make, my little white iridescent hat pink gnome. He turned out really cute. You can put them wherever you like. I have them on my TV. This is my motivation, covering the whole little TV stand here to actually hang this thing on the wall because I've been telling myself I'm going to do that for the last year. So 
hope you guys liked this project. If you want to see actual Christmas resin projects, stay tuned because I have so many to share with you. I am leaning, leaning, leading this entire week up into my Christmas home tour for 2021. So all of the projects that I've done for decor, I'm rolling out first and then the home tour. So if you want to stay tuned, we have all of that coming up. Bye y'all.